Hi everyone, welcome back to the Vision Refocus channel. Our goal here is to discuss all things eye health and vision related. I'm Dr. Kevin Cornwell, and today I wanna to cover a topic that many parents and grandparents will ask about, and that is kids' vision. We'll review how kids' visual systems develop and at what age they should have their first eye exam. We'll also go over some signs, symptoms, and treatments for common vision-related problems in kids, primarily in the context of amblyopia, which we'll get into. And then we'll wrap things up by discussing some actionable steps to keep your kids' eyes healthy for many years to come. Let's jump right in. So our kids' visual systems develop from birth to around age seven. During this critical period, connections between the eyes and the brain are forming. This whole process requires two fully functioning eyes sending clear images back to the brain at the same time. If for whatever reason one eye is unable to do this, the brain will start to ignore the weaker eye in favor of the good eye. This scenario is referred to as amblyopia and is one of the leading causes of permanent vision loss in kids today. There are many reasons kids may be at risk for developing amblyopia, but from my experience, there's two big ones. One is from high amounts of uncorrected refractive error, so high amounts of astigmatism, nearsightedness, or farsightedness in one or both eyes. The other is from lazy eyes, where there's an imbalance of the muscles around the eye, and one eye abnormally turns in or out. All of these situations can lead to permanent vision loss if left untreated. Thankfully, the visual system is very flexible during this critical period, and there's a lot we can do to intervene and get both eyes working together before it's too late. So when it comes to kids first having their eyes checked, we usually recommend parents bring their child in around age three or sooner if there's any red flags with your child's eyes or vision. I'm not just referring to a vision screening at school or with the pediatrician, but I'm also referring to a comprehensive eye exam with your trusted eye care professional. Some common things to look out for for a vision problem can be headaches, squinting, eye turns, head tilts, or head turns. Some other more subtle things to look out for can be a white or opaque pupil, that black center part of our eye, or a jerking or a shaking of the eye as well. That can be a potentially more serious neurological problem. Kids who were born premature or have a family history of any congenital eye disorders or a history of fetal alcohol or drug exposure should also be seen before age three as well. Surprisingly, many kids with vision problems such as amblyopia won't have any symptoms at all. This is because only one eye is affected and usually kids are walking around with both eyes open, so the good eye usually compensates for the bad eye. But as soon as you cover up their good eye, they start to get fidgety and uncomfortable. So when it comes to treating amblyopia, the main thing we do is simply prescribe a pair of glasses. Other treatment options include pharmaceutical eye drops, patching, vision therapy, or possible eye muscle surgery. Remember, the name of the game here is to have each eye sending a clear image back to the brain at the same time. Depending on how severe the amblyopia is and how compliant the child is with treatment will determine how quick their vision improves. A lot of times we see kids go from 2040 to 2060 vision all the way down to 2025 and sometimes even 2020, which is a big improvement from where they started. It's unfortunate, but sometimes I'll see patients in their 40s or 50s as adults who had amblyopia as children, and no matter what I do, I can't get their vision better than 2030 or 2040 because they were never treated for amblyopia or they were never compliant with that treatment. So amblyopia aside, there are three main things we can do to keep our kids' eyes healthy and help prevent them from developing vision problems. And while easier said than done, these are limiting screen time, spending more time outdoors, and eating a healthy balanced diet low in sugar and high in fruits and vegetables. Prolonged periods of near work and screen time can significantly increase the risk of your child becoming nearsighted. While activities like these are essential to most kids' lives today, taking frequent breaks can keep their eyes healthy. The 2020-20 rule is a great place to start. Also, studies have shown that kids who spend about two hours a day outdoors, even if they're doing near-related tasks, are significantly less likely to develop vision problems like nearsightedness. The natural light from the sun is protective for the developing visual system. And lastly, make sure your kids are eating a healthy balanced diet. We see so many eye-related problems in adults from obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, anything you can do to prevent these, your child will thank you later. So there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful in learning more about your child's eyes and vision. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Also, if you have any ideas for eye-related topics you'd like to see covered in a future video, please let me know as well. 
And for more videos on different conditions of the eye with actionable steps for keeping your eyes healthy, feel free to check out the other videos on our channel and consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.